of Juneteenth celebrations in the Queen City. This is the first anniversary of its federal recognition as a holiday. And a Juneteenth parade was held in Uptown this morning on the campus of Central Piedmont Community College. You see people there in that parade. And the goal of the marchers was to showcase the strong, deep roots of black excellence. Well, state leaders have the power to choose whether to observe Juneteenth. Now, North and South Carolina both give state workers the option to take the day off, but it's not an official state holiday. And Queen City News anchor Casey Jones is looking into state laws and how leaders observe the day. Case? Well, a new poll shows about 59% of Americans say they know a lot or something about Juneteenth. That marks the day the last group of 250,000 slaves in Galveston, Texas, learned they were free. Now, word of freedom traveled slow back then. It took more than two years after Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation for all this to happen. So in North Carolina, Governor Roy Cooper issued a proclamation recognizing Juneteenth. He did not make it an official holiday for state workers. Instead, he granted a floating holiday that workers can use to take the day Juneteenth off or any other day with supervisor approval. In South Carolina, state offices remain open on Juneteenth, but they are closed on May 10th for Confederate Memorial Day. That honors people who died fighting to continue slavery. Earlier this year, state lawmakers passed legislation to allow workers to choose another holiday in place of Confederate Memorial Day. So this cleared the way for a state worker to take off Juneteenth or another day. Well, some lawmakers say this follows the Palmetto State's pattern of ignoring history. Some of the first slaves to step foot in this country came through the Port of Charleston, where I'm currently at. And so there's a certain history about this state. Um, there's always been this tortured past as to acknowledging the full story especially when it comes to African people being here and, and acknowledging, not only acknowledging it, but telling the full story. So there's a, a lot of push and pull when it comes to trying to, to deal with these holidays and to get some of my colleagues to understand that this is part of the American story. So Brian and Alicia, I did some digging and I found out that South Carolina was actually one of the last, it was actually the last state to recognize Martin Luther King Day as a paid holiday. Before that, state workers had the option to either take that day off or take off a Confederate holiday instead. Mm -hmm. So this kind of fo follows the pattern here in South Carolina and the lawmaker I spoke to says that makes them want to push even harder to recognize Juneteenth as a public holiday. But the one thing I'm sure you'd agree on is Juneteenth is getting more people to understand the history. You know, whether you're taking the day off or not, I think it's now a topic of conversation that people weren't having in years past. That's right. That Gallup poll does show that. It says that more people know than they did last year. About 37% more people know this year. And uh, probably taking advantage of this wonderful day to take it off, too, and celebrate uh, for Juneteenth as well. All right, Casey, thank you.